Welcome to Todd's Lantern, where we discover the history, talent, and charm of St. John, New Brunswick. Here again, if you look back, you'll see a side of the market you probably never saw before in your lifetime. You see all the arches, uh, they're always blocked by the Woolworths building. Oh, yeah. 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 Anyway, I'm standing on the base of what was the WCTU, Women's Christian Temperance Union, Power Fountain. And it had a fountain, three levels, one for people, one for horses, one for dogs. It was built in 1883 in memory of the Loyalist women. But from day one, it was considered the ugliest statue in Canada. <laughs> the newspaper poked fun of it from the day it was unveiled, and there happened to be a comedian in town that day playing at the Columbia Mechanics Institute, and uh, that comedian also poked fun of it. The St. John Globe referred to the monument as hideous and asked if it was a gatepost or a dissipated tombstone. <laughs> A comedian named Walter Pelham came to the city in mid-July and publicly made fun of the monument. The Globe commented that the ladies' effort were kindly and well-intentioned, and Pelham's jest reflected popular sentiment. In 1962, the mayor of the city, Eric Teed at the time, decided that it had stood long enough as the most ugly statue in Canada, and he decreed the traffic movement by was rattling the base of the fountain and it had to be moved. And it was moved to the asphalt plant in Millage Hope and Barry, <laughs> where it re re relays to this day. The official word was that by placing it under the earth, it will remain solid and we can re-erect it someday. But it didn't. It disintegrated. It was sandstone. And sandstone doesn't stand up. Oh, the asphalt, did I say that wrong? It's the asphalt no, it's plant. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, is it an asphalt plant or is it just the city works? City works department. It's city works salt department. Domes. Okay. Now, my own personal story here is that my dad was a city transit bus driver and he parked his bus right over here and this was bathroom break time. Going into the market, he used the washroom facilities and get back on your bus and you, you still were on time. And one day dad had uh, mom's diamond ring with him because the stone had become loose. And instead of going in the washroom, dad hightailed it from his bus over here across the road to what was known as King Square Jewelers. And their motto was, Hubba Hubba Ding Ding. Meet me at the head of King. <laughs> And so Dad rushed over, and when he took the ring, showed them what he wanted done, there was no diamond. The diamond had somehow fallen somewhere between that bus and that King Square jewelry. But Dad told me the story later, that he got down on his hands and knees, and he crawled from King Square Jewelers back to the bus. And then he crawled back again, and he found the diamond. Oh. And my sister has it to this day. Oh, nice. So, how the hubba ding ding, or he be at the head of king. <laughs> People are puzzled by that head of king and foot of king. Well, those are English terms that came with the golden settlers. Head of king, head of foot of king. Okay, we have a couple more stops. Now, on July the 1st, we always have a ceremony in Burnhill Cemetery to mark the resting place of this gentleman, Sir Samuel Leonard Tilly, and the other father of Confederation, William Henry Steves. This is the only cemetery in Canada that has two fathers of Confederation buried. And at 11 o'clock 
on July 1st, you can join a walk that Harold and I are leading through Fern Hill. And we will be stopping at those two spots, but we will be also stopping in a good many other spots that we've identified over the years and tell the story of those buried there. And this is a free walk. We're doing it because Fern Hill kindly supports this program with six walks through the summer. And uh, we want to do something to uh, thank them. So you're welcome to come. Up to 50 people can come. That's the rules now. And uh, you don't have to register for that one. You just have to show up. Normally, 10 or 12 people show up, so I'm not too worried about the 50. But uh, maybe this year, with less going on, more people will show up. And this, this Sir Samuel Leonard Tilly statue was raised a few years after his death. I think in 1894, it was raised around 19, I forget the exact date, but 19. And maybe quite a, bit, quite a ways after. And uh, I was being interviewed here one time by an American television crew. They were interested in uh, some historic, historic tidbits about St. John. And King Square was one of the things. Those motorcycles. King Square was one of the things that caught their attention. So they asked me to come and walk around King Square with them and share the story of some of the monuments. We came to Tilly and they asked me a question. Why is Tilly green? And I knew the right answer. Bronze, and it, that's the color of bronze goes. But I thought I'd be a little smart ass that day. And I said, Tilly is green out of jealousy because this is where all the young lovers settle at night to do their smooching. And that's what turned them green. <laughs> I don't know if that ever appeared on American television or not. <laughs> anyway, we have two more stories. Three over here. Uh, we're just walking. Uh, as you're standing here, you can vaguely, very vaguely, just see the top of Trinity Church and the big salmon. It's at the top of the church. And uh, below it, you see, well, you can't read, kind of long. But you can see the clock, which has been, there's been a clock at Trinity since 1810. And the salmon has only been down in, uh, well, the church burned in 1877, and then it wasn't down again until 1926, and then it wasn't down again until 1964. Probably will never be taken down again because they'll probably put a boom up and work on it up there. But in 1926, when it was taken down, the people that were walking along here were shocked to see a gentleman standing on the top of a spire, which is a ball over the top of the salmon, waving to the people going by in the street. There's actually a picture in the church of the two gentlemen, um, and it was given to the church by a, a member of the congregation about 10 or 12 years ago because it was his grandfather that was in the picture. I think his name was Chason, but I'm, I'm not sure of that. Anyway, um, the spire is uh, 210 feet, and another one of those bits of legend that I was told as a, an Anglican was that the spire at the cathedral, as you showed you earlier, was built 20 feet higher just to show the Anglicans that they weren't the top, top people in the city. And it's 230 feet, according to what I've been told. Again, that's a bit of local lore, and whether it's, it's uh, true or not. When I began attending this church, Fergus Price sort of was the uh, comedian, or the uh, commentator about history, and Fergus uh, shared a lot, of, a lot of stories with me, including one about Archdeacon Caulfield, who uh, in his later life lived in this building here. But, in his earlier time, lived in a rectory next to the church. And this was the Admiralty Hotel. And Archdeacon Caulfield used to get calls late at night because the people that were staying in the hotel were disturbed by the fact that the Trinity Church clock bonged 12 times at midnight. <laughs> it made it a little difficult to get to sleep. It made it difficult for Archdeacon Caulfield, too.
<laughs> that was a story Burgers Price told me. And uh, there's another story about the Admiral Beatty Hotel. Um, I once met a man named George Burnett who was living in the hotel here. And uh, he told me a story which was quite amazing. In 1961, George said, like most men in the era, I had a couple of tubes of oil cream in the bathroom cabin. My wife noticed them and reminded me that a company was having a contest. It was looking for a jingle to promote their hair product. I got busy and wrote a little rhyme and sent it in. It read, Real cream, a little devil do you? Real cream, simply, simply use a little on your hair. The girls will all pursue you. You can have the cocoa by the pair. <laughs> Well, George said, two days later, a blue cream company phoned me and said I'd want a bright red MG sports car. The day after that, I met a guy who wanted to buy such a car, but only if it was red. So I told him mine was red all right. He bought it. He lived in St. Stephen, and the money I got was a down payment of my first house, which was on Squire Street in Fredericton. It was a $12,000 house, and by selling the car, I hit 2,500 down, down, dollars down, and that looked pretty good. So that, if next time you hear that Brill Cream commercial, not the song as badly as I sang it. But, uh, <laughs> there it is. There you'll know it. It was George Burnett that uh, did uh, that. Uh, Must have been Carol's that. grandfather. Huh? Must have been Carol's grandfather. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Vernon. Um, Harold. Um, I have a, um, I have a programs here. Remember, I told you I had programs. And next week's program, I'm looking for. We only got 12 right now registered, but we could we could have as many as tonight. And every walk, of course, we have a a really gig, a New Brunswick uh, chickadee. This one is natural wood because I made it out of wood. I found on Campobello Island on September of 19, uh, 2019. So it's been sitting in my shed. Of course, we didn't have we didn't have a program last year. So anyway, um, I'd like to award this to somebody and today. And uh, sometimes we have a skill testing question, but today I'm going to award it to the person whose birthday is nearest to mine which uh, my birthday is July 23rd. What's yours? July 19th. 19th? That's three days. Anyone closer? Nobody closer? Congratulations. No. Happy birthday. This has to be pulled in your backyard. You have to make a pull with a spike in it and fly it. And these are flying. I'm telling you people who won these from all over the world. I know these are flying in in Europe, in South Africa, Australia, and out by Marilyn Lester's house. Not long ago, I saw one <laughs> stuck in a tree, in the crack of a tree. So find a home, find a home. I will. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all for coming tonight and uh, come again through the summer. And if anyone wants to get their their Fernhill. Uh, Ticket if you, if you order one, do you want it? I gotta get it.